Standing by, Dr. Deborah Burks. You talk about influential women. We're remembering the great Rosalind Carter and a life well lived and what she did for furthering the conversation or pushing the conversation forward about mental health in this country. She was way ahead of her time. And Dr. Burks for a generation plus has been working on trying to make us smarter in, in a lot of ways, trying to protect us from ourselves. And it's nice to have you back on this show. Happy Thanksgiving week. Thank you so much. And thank you for understanding how important it is to your listeners to understand how to protect them and their family as we all gather together this week. Uh, I'm going to put this on the book list for everybody. You want to buy a book for somebody? Buy this one, Silent Invasion, the untold story of the Trump administration, COVID-19, preventing the next pandemic before it's too late. I mean, one of your sermons, Dr. Burks, is we have the resources. We have the ability. We have the spend. And how are we going to do it? And are we going to do it? Or are we just going to sit back and have to react again? Now, before we get to the deep, dark stuff, let's start with the basic fundamentals as we gather this week. With due respect to everyone, that you're a grown-up, you can do whatever you want. But if you care about others and you care about people um, in your world, people that may be immunocompromised, people that could be you know, going through uh, cancer therapies, things of that nature, be careful. Because you may feel good, but you may have something funky you can pass along. What do you want to add to that? So well described, Stephen. It's really true. So number one, everyone should order those free tests. Get those free tests um, because with all of the, particularly with COVID, a lot of it can be asymptomatic if you're under 40 and you are knowingly are bringing it into your Thanksgiving table. So number one, order the free test. Number two, understand that vaccination is important, but isn't going to protect you after about three or four weeks from potentially becoming infected and not knowing you're infected. So I don't want to hear anyone say, oh, I got vaccinated, so I don't have to worry about my immunosuppressed aunt or my elderly grandparents. You do, because you can still be asymptomatically infected. Third, COVID will never be flu. And why is that? Because flu does not have this high level of long COVID and long COVID symptoms, and it doesn't have the clotting disorders and the cardiovascular risk that comes with having a prior COVID infection. So, and remember long COVID can occur even with mild disease. So remember how we've been talking about the triple pandemic? Well, this Mm -hmm. year it finally (laughs) will happen in your area, in the upper Midwest and the Northeast, because RSV is widespread in the South, flu widespread in the South, and COVID is high in the wastewater throughout the Northwest, upper Midwest and Northeast. And so we are carrying a huge amount of respiratory disease, flu, COVID, RSV, into this Thanksgiving gathering. Not to scare anyone, but remember, 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 if you if you get sick after Thanksgiving, please tell your grandparents to get tested. You cannot tell the difference between flu, COVID, or RSV. And they need to be tested so they can get treatment. There are great treatments out there. Remember, vaccines aren't 100% protective, whether it's flu, RSV, or COVID, and you want to protect your immunosuppressed individuals and your grandparents, there's a lot that you can do. Just be aware, um, and we can save a lot of lives. Yeah, and the miracle of the COVID vaccines, to me, is not just the amount of time it took to develop and how the whole vaccine game has been changed, but also that even if you do get COVID, how much less of a struggle you're going to be going through because of what the vaccines retrain your body to do. Is that scientific? Absolutely, except, and we're just gonna put this caveat in there. For people who are what I will call the extreme elderly, I don't know, I'm sure they don't wanna be called that, but for people- You talking to me? (laughs) (laughs) Not you all, people over 85. If you have people over 85 in your household, a lot of our immune systems decay just like our knees, our teeth, our eyes. And so even though they may be vaccinated, they may not be adequately protected from severe disease. And that's why I'm saying if they get the least bit sick after Thanksgiving or in the future holidays, 
get them tested to RSV, flu A and B and COVID. Urgent care and any place can do that, do it quickly, and then they can get the right treatment. So we have to know in the extreme elderly that your immune system is not great anymore. Yes, there are people with great immune systems over 85, but in general, that's our highest death rate still. We've lost about 8% of all Americans over 85. Dr. Burks, it's all of this so interesting. My primary care physician just sent a regular checkup, said, have you, you didn't get your COVID shot yet? And I said, no. And she said, well, you think about it because if the you get it, your symptoms may be light to easy, but you may have this long COVID. And what we should be thinking about is dealing with the long COVID because that is where you're going to not feel well for a really long time. When we're talking about get the vaccine and we're getting together this holiday week, is it too late to get any protection if say someone got the shot today or tomorrow and then going to be traveling or with family this week? No, because... um in your immune response, what we call memory immune response, it can be very quick. It can be in less than a week that you start to rebuild and increase your, what we call our antibody titers and our, our cellular immunity. So yeah, it's not too late. It's not too late to get RSV vaccine. It's not too late to get flu vaccine. And it's not too late to get COVID vaccine. About long COVID, there is data now that does suggest that people who have been vaccinated are less at risk for long COVID. So thank you for bringing that up. People in their 30s, 40s, even teenagers can get long COVID and it can be devastating, devastating. And the brain fog is really quite unrelenting. And so yes, people are working on treatments, but we don't have any definitive treatments yet for long COVID. So let's try to prevent getting that rather than having months and months and months of brain fog. Yeah. The other thing too, that I, I want people to think about when we come back, I want to talk about the, there is good news out there. And, and the good news is what we can do if we choose to do it. But I want people to remember something that's important that you said before that, that Fauci said before a bunch of people have said this and, and, and our own Dr. Most and others. Science is what we know at the time we know it. The key is to continue to know things and broaden your knowledge base and that science will change. What we know about COVID today and long COVID today mm -hmm. is going to be vastly different than what we know a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road. So too often, sloppy, lazy reporting has allowed there to be this notion put forward that, hey, you said, <laughs> well, what we know is what we know now. The best science minds, the trained science minds, we call them doctors. Um, who did go to medical school and did do the research. These are the people I listen to because they know more than I do. And they want to help me take care of me and the people in my world. So there's no absolutes. And nobody in science is telling you there are, doctor. Absolutely correct. And that's why when you get cancer, they give you the overall risk for life expectancy and response. But remember, you're an individual and you respond differently. And so that's why more and more data, particularly in the oncology field, has really helped us understand cancers. For decades and really a century, we ignored respiratory disease and respiratory viruses, and we acted like it wouldn't be a big deal. And now we need to really study them in a way that we've never studied them before to really understand what's been going on and what's going on with long COVID. I worry all the time because what if long COVID predisposes you to early onset dementia or something else in the future? People will say, well, you never warned us. Well, because we're only four years in and we don't want to scare people. But we have to be realistic that we didn't know what long COVID was until six months in. And we're learning about it still on year four. Um, when we come back, I want to talk to you about the government resources that are available. And just one of the other reasons that you should be voting for people that actually care about what you need to be caring about and keeping you safe. Uh, the medical community knows the truth. So does Congress. The question is, will Congress and the White House act uh, before they must act and do something preventive and not reactive clock. Dr. Deborah Burks is here. And uh, Dr. Burks, um, I want to get into the big picture of this, but, you know, Jane has a couple of important follow-up questions related to this new strain of COVID I want to jump on too. But first, COVID tests with an S.gov was the free test site. To your knowledge, is that where we still go? 
Yes. And the reason, I, please get the test. Remember, it's only testing for COVID. But remember, I'm talking about RSV and flu also being a problem where you are. If you're in the northern areas of the United States, it's going to be a very rough RSV, flu, and COVID season. Last year, it was cereal. They came one right after another. This year, they're going to come together. And remember, pregnant women and young children under two, very susceptible to flu and RSV, pregnant women to flu, RSV, and COVID. So it's not just the elderly and the immunosuppressed. So really, this is why it's so important to take care of one another and know. COVID tests with an S, covidtests.gov. It kicks you to the UPS site. It's legit. Everybody's worried about ID theft. So if you go, if you, if you click on it and then suddenly you're on a, a UPS site, that's fine. If we, have, secure. if we have older tests in the cabinet and in the closet, how, are they still effective? Are they expired? Can we use those? Well, a lot of the tests got their expiration dates extended. So if you go to that company's website, you'll see if your lot got extended for another year. So that's really important. Um, but remember, we don't have home tests for RSV and flu. And I'm hoping mm. that the federal government will do that because you really want to know what nice. you have. I'm talking about all three of them being together. You want to test at home. You want to protect each other. You really need home tests for RSV, flu, and COVID. It's so important. I just had dinner with a lifelong friend, and she was getting over an illness. She said, I had RSV, my husband had RSV, and our daughter had RSV. And I said, what do you mean you had RSV? I thought that only blank could get it. Uh, and she said, no, it's running rampant in our area. And so the fact that you're saying, yes, it is happening here, RSV, flu, and COVID are on you know the high demand here, and well, I don't say high demand; we don't want it. But the, when we high look, incidence, high incidence of it happening. Well, I, yeah. I guess like how did she know she had RSV? So that that's the unfortunate part. You've got to go to urgent care right now or to an emergency room, which is really unfortunate. We learned the value of these home tests because you're right. Both of you always talk about how your listeners want to do the right thing and will do the right thing. But we've got to give them the tools to do the right thing and to do it conveniently. So if we can do Cologuard at home, we can do these tests that's at true. home that's and true. really empower people with that information. And remember... Almost a third or a half of the wastewater sites are down now because of this contract dispute with the CDC. And although I can see that wastewater is high in many parts of the country, we don't have as many eyes on COVID as we had three years ago. And if you wait till you have rising hospitalizations to either flu, RSV, or COVID, it's too late. It's too widespread. You really can't protect the vulnerable people in the community. The thing that keeps Dr. Deborah Burks up at night is the next one. And yeah. the next one um, can happen. You know, just because it was 100 years between pandemics doesn't mean we're not going to get one next Thursday. So what do you need to say to people to encourage them to go vote for people who are taking this seriously? You know, the number one thing that we've learned with pandemics, and I've worked on Zika and Ebola and malaria, TB and HIV, the number one thing is detect. That is know what's circulating so you can know what's new in the circulation. And what has happened over the last four years is all that technology that we built up and we all did together is all and all that data, almost all of it has been taken down. And so, yes, we're vulnerable again because we don't have detection at the level we need both to protect from ordinary diseases and spread that can be extraordinary and vulnerable family members. And still, people are dying every day of COVID, particularly those over 85, and we're just ignoring it. So we have the technology and tools, and we're not using them. Yeah, and it's endlessly frustrating because we need um, we need preventive. We don't need reactive. Exactly. I've got a great exactly. idea. Take home gift, get your COVID tests, get the tests, wrap them up in a little Thanksgiving bow, and they're party favors when people leave the house. Look at you. <laughs> Turning it into a fashion event. Oh, that's great. And people like to give favors. Of course. Um, I love that idea. But remember, <laughs> RSV and flu, we don't have those tests. No. If you have those symptoms and you're worried, you know, the only way to protect the vulnerable at your household is to mask. And I know no one wants to mask indoor during Thanksgiving. No. Where will you be Thanksgiving? -ing? 
Well, I still have my um, 94 year old mother living with us. And so we have, she's not gotten COVID in the four years. We're very protective. Wow, that's great. Um, so we'll, we're all still on high alert and we use testing still as a family to make sure that we don't bring COVID into that household. And uh, who's cooking? Do you have to cook or is other she cooking? She makes mom cook. Yeah, she makes I, mom. You know, my daughters who are now in their 30s, they do the sides. So oh. I just have to do the entrees. And I'm a horrible baker because I don't like to measure. So they're the baker. <laughs> I get it. That's why you're a doctor and not a pharmacist. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dr. Burks, uh, God bless you. Thanks for the work you do and the time you give us. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Dr. Burks. Thank you both for staying on top of this. Really appreciate it for your listeners. And uh, be well and stay healthy. Uh, Coming up on 7 o'clock, Terry Bradshaw, after the news. You got to hear what he said Friday. He's a psychic. He knew the bears would suck. Uh, First, here's the news and Nick Gale on WLS.